So uh, what uh, we both are in the same situation where your son is known not to be found and you are on the streets, right? Like my situation is a little different. I'm not going to say you and me are, I mean, that is not fair to you. Yes, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I get> right? <laughs> so like, I don't want to minimize what's going on with you. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you last Monday was Columbus Day, right? Like mm -hmm. holiday. <laughs> my eldest one, he always gets into trouble with us. He comes from Rhode Island. Uh, he remember he does music and stuff. No, I played with you guys the rap music he created. I don't know what I played. No, oh, actually, I thought uh, he he does rap. That's cool. So it's Rick Brown Dot Club. So if I play, you will know that's his music. So why I'm bringing it up is, mm -hmm. right, so he was picked up by a music label. Mm -hmm. So he came to interview, he lost privileges to drive. So then when he was here, uh, he said, like Monday night I worked here, I go home at nine, I was exhausted the day. And he says, mom, can I take your car to go get something to eat? So I thought like, you know, uh, he, like, you know, I felt, I think this is the mother's we sabotage, like in other rules, right? So, you even though I agreed with my husband, he cannot drive, <laughs> I kind of felt bad. So I yeah. said, okay, he said, you have to stay in Holliston. Right. You know? And I said, you cannot drive beyond the town. So he agrees. And then he goes, and, and my husband has cooked the big meal. I'm like, hey, is this guy a monster? Like, look yeah, at this, yeah, all the food, yeah, yeah. you know. See, the problem is I'm so stupid, you know. Like, yeah, I, I could see right in, in front of my right. eyes. There was, it was a lie. Right, of course. But I couldn't comprehend, right? So he goes, and then I go to bed, like, you know, 10 30 at night. Like, I was half drowsy. He calls me, he says, Mom, I'm broken down. I said, What do you mean? I said, my car was driving right, fine, right, right. you know, I came only at night, nine o'clock. So I asked him, babe, he says he's broken down four times over. I couldn't believe it. Like, I was so shocked. And first of all, I cannot get angry at this kid. And he's at a very difficult place. I promised him, call me anytime. Right, I can't right. pick you up, you know. So I drive with another car, my husband's car, of course, he flip out if he, he wakes up in the morning and hears yeah. the car. <laughs> so I go there, I told him, I said, you're driving my car, which is very spiritual car, it's going to sabotage you. Yeah. <laughs> so then I told him and I looked at him, I said, see, we were this close to getting your car. Uh, and that's it, he went berserk, he, you know, held on to it, see, he says, like, you know, it's like almost like, like something exploded it's in right. it. And then uh, I there were two kids over there. I said, hey, can you guys give me a jump start? So we popped the hood. Come to find out, just the battery moved a little bit, that's all. Oh, they my. just adjusted it, started. Oh, no. Yeah, and this guy, like, you know, like, he feels too bad. Like, you know, so. And he was putting gas in it. I was suspect he drove. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, he's that's he's a little do. brain, you know. He's an 18-year-old. What can he expect? That, yeah. And then afterwards, he takes off totally in the opposite direction to home. He ended up being a car chase for me. I was chasing him for like four hours. He ran red lights and stuff. I felt I'm going to lose him that night. Okay, I felt if I don't bring him back home, his soul is yeah, lost that, for me. Awesome. And that's when I realized, you know, this is what the mothers are facing. Our kids 
in front of us are dying right. and we cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I prayed I four hours. Back before. So I, for four yeah. hours, prayed non-stop. So he will stop, he will, a rage will stop. I could see, but see, I worked in those areas for nursing home. So I know in and out of the town, you know, thank God, right? Yeah, no so whichever way he went, I could chase him because yeah. I knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, thank God, like for my background, you know? So yeah. like I, I knew exactly where he was. I could like track him. And then afterwards, like, you know, he calmed down and we came back home and um, I was listening, like, you know, to my teacher after I come back home because he gives me the exact lesson I needed that night. One of the things he says is when you take power from a, a, from a lion, it becomes fox. You just, you have, to, you have to work with that power. So I am telling myself the exact reason I asked him, I said, what happened? Uh, so he says to me, Mom, I went to the local web shop. They didn't have the exact uh, train I wanted. Like, I remember they wanted oil or something. That guy says to him, go by next town. I'm going to call my friend. He, in his mind, thinks it's next town. So he just drives, right? right? Yeah. Because he says to him, it's only nine miles away. Uh, so in his mind, he doesn't uh, add two and two. He was so desperate because the next day he needs to go to college. Yeah. Without this as a mood stabilizer, he goes crazy. Uh, and he is being hazed at college. Oh, God. And he knew all of me released. It says, I will put your girlfriend in the boneyard. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you can see the trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you know, this kid is awesome. having an awful time. So I actually um, then decided, you know, what I'm going to do is somehow get him a car because this has like gone beyond normal for me. Right. And I said, like, you know, I'm going to do what is right for him. So I told him, okay, I will work. I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to work with you to bring that home. And then, like, you know, um, that's when I'm realizing as a mother of children, who need it as medicine. There is nothing you can do except doing it the right way. But I'm going to come back to you first. If they break the law, there's no excuse. Right. So if it is a street dog right. that includes you, I know. you cannot put it in your body. So, like, you know, see, I can say that to you because I know you. Right. But that doesn't mean I'm better than you. No, I but I feel if you break the law, they are going to detox you mm -hmm. in the prison right no so i feel mm -hmm. like you know so first of all being legal is important mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter what you're using make sure you can legally get it right. and make sure you're having access to it okay and it includes your son so with your boyfriend he threw you out he became homeless right like tell me your situation i'm living in a tent that's because you supported your son yeah and your son was found high and your boyfriend felt you supported your son and threw you off. Okay. So so what happened is you used your anger to like kind of like you know prove that you're you're not worthy of the judgment and you lost everything, right? Sometimes anger is powerful, sometimes it's destructive. You're using anger in a destructive manner. It's not going to serve you. Right? No, I see that. So right now it's time to be humble, right? Like courage to change the thing I can accept what I cannot change. Right. So go back to the acceptance piece and ask for your boyfriend's help to retrieve the soul of your son because that is your priority right. rather than staying angry. Right. Because it's not even about homeless for you. No, it's not. Okay, so so you need to work as a team. So you need to call him and say, hey, I really need your help to bring my son back home. Oh, and I man. think he, men are like going inside. Really, yeah. you know, the minute you call them, they Begin, forgive you. Right. Yeah, they're just waiting you for make, them. That's a good idea. And if I ask him for help, it empowers him. The yes, because the thing is, that. like, you know, what does it matter to you, right? Being homeless is nothing. Like, I have been homeless in the past, and it didn't bother me at all. No. 
nothing to me. Home or not no, homeless. No. I feel even at home homeless. Yeah, right, so right, being, I know. Being huh? homeless is like, you know, one more, one more right. title to hold. Yeah, right. Right. Like today, so what I'm saying so. is your priority right now is bringing back your son home. That takes precedence over your uh, mm-hmm. personal, like, you know, air. This will give you the path, the path, like, you know, providing access yeah. to recovery. Then we initiated the phone call. Right. I'm going to read out that number to you. Read it out. The number they need to call. 857-937-930-6929. If they call them. Okay, oh, yeah, 930, I can be in that 6929. So what I would suggest is for you put that in process in place, which will take five days for them to get you a bed. But this way, like, you know, you're taking care of yourself. Yes, right. At the same time, your son comes in. He can be part of your program. Right. You can both go together. Maybe it'd be a good chance yeah. for, for you guys to build that relationship. But your number one priority today is getting it's your son back. back. Absolutely. And whether you go to the police station, file a report, missing person report. Or, like, you know, do with some support system. Okay, that's your number one. Number two is, like, you know, figure out what you could have done better. Because sometimes biting your tongue and not being angry is the best way to handle the situation. But if you're high, there's no way you would be able to handle it. So right. getting off whatever you are I is know, number one. Yeah. You know, so I think you reacted. Reaction is not to action. Is right, right. So you can say, hey, I got activated and I used, I apologize. So you can tell your boyfriend, like, you know, like, you know give me another chance. And then work on uh, getting on track again because it's not about falling. Yes, I even debated coming here today. Like, yes, Never you know, debate but, that. You know why? You know, Logging in, wanna... showing up is half the trouble. Yeah. Showing up. I knew I wanted it. I just didn't. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you know, don't worry. The problem is, if people don't treat you right, that's on them. Shame on them. Right. You have to do only what you can to the best of your ability. So don't worry. Yesterday, same thing happened. Me and my boss fought. Like, you know, he was saying, you're never capable of getting up early, so you cannot show up early. I said, that's a projection. I said, that's where you are at. I said, in the morning, my middle one is raping my youngest one, okay? They go to school at 7, and I cannot compete for bathroom. Right. And I take a shower after 7, and sometimes I want to have a tea. I know. So I leave at 8, and then I come here, sometimes 9, I make it or 9.30. But he feels if I don't show up at eight, I wake up late. That's like, that's not it. I that's, know that. But one thing I've learned over time is never to use a tone that shows I'm upset because I'm not upset. I am here to correct a, a perception. Mm-hmm. That is a very different angle I take because his perception is I see it late, I come late. That's not true. In the morning, one of the rules I give my son. Because my husband is compulsive. They have to wash their dishes when he's not home. And my days are Wednesday, Thursday with my kids. And I go home late. So I tell them, on my days, if you wash dishes, I have a problem with you. Yeah. Because it is your child. So I, when I go home, they're sleeping. I don't want to roll the right. dishes. So I, in the morning, wake up. Take time to wash the dishes because I want to have my tea before I do dishes. Exactly. Like, yeah, you don't want to be in the cold water, water right, right now. So, so, so I feel like no, my priority is to make tea, wash dishes, run the dishwasher, then get out. It takes me like sometimes half hour. And sometimes, like, you know, I engage with my mail and stuff. You know, I want to have like one hour on my time. I but if that bothers him, I can leave, you know, so, but I feel like, you know, being human is part of life. I could have reacted yesterday and I could have jumped around and said, I'm quitting. Yeah, I know. You know, I know. Is, yeah. So that is not the point. The point is, like, you know, all of us are human. But by doing our agenda, we are violating the way we need to communicate with each other. Our agenda is not our priority. Priority comes first. What is it I'm here for? Because if I had walked out, 200 people wouldn't have a doctor. Right, right. Same thing. If you walk out, your son would be losing his life. And for life, you will regret it. So, yes, bringing back your son is your priority. I want to see you next week. I don't want anything. Nothing will be in. You're going to make a promise. I promise you. I promise you. Nothing. That's my goal.